Greetings! It is I, David Stewart. Time for a little music theory and composition supplemental. Um, this video is partly in response to a comment on my last video on functional harmony and triads in a major key and the three basic motions that happen there. Um, the comment was by Ilka Rosman. He's asking, how do I get some more depth and complexity to my chords? How do I up my compositional game when it comes to chords? Um, and I'm going to show a couple of shortcuts and a couple of ways that you can experiment um, to add more depth to harmony and create a little bit more complex relationship in your harmonies. Um, but before I do that, let me prelude this by saying all the more complex techniques will be coming down the pipe in the series. It's just going to take a while to get through them all because if there's a lot to, if there's a lot of information out there, it takes a long time to communicate it. Likewise, if there's a lot to learn, it also takes a long time to learn it. So there's no shortcuts when it comes to learning. If there's a lot to know, it's going to take you a while to learn it and to really understand it. Um, I can't just like sprinkle magic fairy dust on you and make you understand harmony. Um, you're going to have to look at the techniques that other composers have used, try to use them in your compositions and see if you can get the same effect that the other composer had. And then you have a tool at your disposal for whenever you're composing your music. That's the way that you really want to learn theory and apply it. It's the way that that I recommend it is you take the concept, you go write some music with it, and you see if you can accomplish the same sort of effect that the composer did. So if you're studying Mozart, you see what he did, you go compose something that used that same technique and see, oh yeah, I was able to get that effect that Mozart used, and then it's now at your disposal. It's something that you can use in whatever music you happen to be writing or composing. Um, and that's the way I, I really like to look at it, but that takes a long time. Um, so let me give you, so with that prelude, that there are no shortcuts and the complexity will be coming down the pipe and you should be patient and enjoy the process of learning. Let me show you a couple shortcuts and ways that you can experiment right now um, with basic music knowledge um, to add a little bit more depth and a little more interest to some of the harmonies you're using. I'm going to put up a keyboard right here and um, you'll be able to see sort of what I'm doing um, hopefully pretty clearly. So if we go back to that other video in C major, we had seven chords in C major and you can build a triad. C major is all just, you know, all the white keys. Um, you can build a triad just by pressing every other note. So every other note builds a triad all the way up. Now those can get a little bit boring. And if you uh, look at that four chord sequence that everyone uses in like every pop song. First chord, the sixth chord, the fourth chord, the fifth chord, it's heart and soul. Right? If you did it like that, it'd be heart and soul. And I like to use string patches, by the way, because you can hear the harmony really, uh, really sustain and you can get a sense of it versus doing a, a piano patch. Um, so with those triads, we can get them, they sound a little bit boring. Um, one of the first ways that you can do to sort of fussy them up, or first things that you can do, is to add extensions. And I am going to have a video that expi explicitly talks about seventh chord, seventh chords, and then I'll have videos that talk about the crazier extensions beyond that. And if you're a jazz player, if you listen to jazz, those extensions are a big, big meaty part of the harmony. Um, but since you're going every other note, you can continue to go every other note and do four notes. That's a C major seven chord, which has a little bit different quality than C major. And we can even, um, you can even create a little, a little bit different um, voicing of it and, and have a, a much different effect if we listen to that. Um, it has a much different quality. It has a, uh, it sort of saddens the C major chord a little bit, um, but we can actually keep building from there. If we keep going every other note, we can add a ninth, an eleventh, and a thirteenth. Now you can't add past the thirteen because once you get past the thirteen to the uh, what the fifteen, you're just back at C. Um, so if you're playing every every other note all the way up, you'll actually be playing every note in C major. So most of the time, you're going to pick one or two of the extensions to have. So you'll have you know, you'll have a C major chord and maybe you just have the ninth on top. And and if you're wondering about intervals, intervals are really easy. I haven't I haven't done a video on this either, but we will. Intervals. There's the one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine notes away from the from the root of the chord. Therefore it's a ninth. Um, so you can go through lots of these and, and you can add, you know, major seventh. Ninth, right? Back to uh, maybe we go to a uh, a ninth for the for the F, or we can go to a seventh for the A minor. And uh, you know, if we went to the G7, ooh, now we have the eleventh. And if I hear that, 
Kind of sounds like a, a little figure. There's a little figure in Legend of Zelda, like the um, the town theme, I think, in Link to the Past uses that exact figure. Um, uses that the E in a um, G major chord, uh, which is actually the, what is that? Uh, that's the 13th. And then we resolve down to the 5th, and then we go all the way down and end on the root of C major. So that's a way that you can add a little bit more tension into the chords um, in, in a vertical sense, like while the chords are sounding. Um, so there's the first tip, extensions. You can play around with those. Um, I'll do a video that goes through those a little more thoroughly and sort of how they work. But all you all you have to know from an experimental point of view is the further the extension away is from the root, like the 13th, um, the more uh, dissonant and the more tense it's going to sound. Uh, and as you choose your voicings, I haven't talked about voicings or inversions yet, but as you choose your voicings, you may find that... Um, kind of spreading the chord out a little bit gives it a little bit different sound. Like I would use that maybe in like an ambient piece. It's very calm uh, because all the all the notes are really far away from each other. Um, but if we condense them all down, we get that sound. Okay. So there's a extensions. So you can try playing with some extensions. Um, I in particular like ninths and elevenths to add um, a real kind of sparkle to whatever major chords I happen to be using. So I like ninths and elevenths with major chords. Um, and I like 13ths with minor chords. So if I'm going like like an E minor 13, um, kind of ends up sounding like this. It has this, um, or flat, it's really flat 13. It, it has an interesting quality to it too. So I like 13s a lot with minor chords. That's just my preference. You may find ones that you like yourself. Here's another thing is that if you're going through a sequence of chords in C major, um, what you can actually do is as long as you're thinking of the root, um, you can change the quality of the chord and get a little bit different effect from what you might be expecting. Um, and that can surprise the listener and also change sort of the quality of the chords as you're going through. So experiment with these things, try them out, and see if you could come up with effects that you like. So just as an example, if we're playing that those four little, little chords again, and I change one to a minor. Let's say I go from here to here. And I'm going to go to F minor. Now to go to F minor, all of a sudden we have a real sadness in the middle of that. And then we can still go to G7 and get to C. Um, so we can put a, a minor four chord in the middle of that, which gives a, a little bit a kind of um, unsettling, but it doesn't sound that far out because we're only altering one note. And the note is going down by a half step. I haven't talked about voice leading yet either. It'll all it'll all come together. But these are just some things to experiment with. One thing that I think actually sounds really cool, and if you can see what I'm doing with my hands, you'll see why the voice leading maybe works if you know a little bit about voice leading. Um, if I play, um, let's say I'm going to play um, a C major, and then I'm going to play um, first what's called the first inversion six chord. So I'm playing an A, but I'm just putting the A up here. So there's the A minor, and then I'm going to go to E7. And E7 sounds like this. And then from E7, I'm going to go to F minor. And if you look, F minor, two of the notes move up. And then I can go to, to a, a really nice sounding G. And then I can go down to C. So we have a movement in seconds from E, F, G in the root, um, which is going to have a dramatic uh, sense, but we also have this motion from E, um, you know, E major to F minor, where the middle of the chord is the is the note that gets held from one to the next, uh, and that produces a really interesting effect. And then we can go back to G7, back to C, um, and you can also you know change to a minor key in the middle of that. I haven't gone over minor minor keys even. But that's one thing you can do, change the quality of the chord in the middle of your regular triad sequence and uh, see what happens there. So I really like that E7 uh, or e, e major really um, to F minor. If we wanted to do, you know, we could do E7, you know, to F minor to G7 to C major. Okay, so that's one that's one way that you can do that. So there's two ways: extensions, try changing the quality of the chords. That's sort of a borrowed chord technique, um, but you can do it even outside of borrowing chords from the minor or major or anything like that. Last thing, and I haven't gone over this yet in a video, um, but I will, is um, you can change the relationship of the melody with the chords that underlies it to um, produce a really really different effect. And um, I'll just play. Let's just play maybe somewhere over the rainbow. Okay, so somewhere over the rainbow 
has this really, um, let's see, you can see it up here, right? Yeah, okay. So Somewhere Over the Rainbow has this, uh, has this very dramatic. It's on the five, it's a major, it's a melody in a major key. It's really major. But we can change the setting of it. Now normally we'd want to set the chords. to G7. All right. But if we change those and we instead of starting on C, we start on A minor, which has C in the third. And instead of going to G7 for the B, we go to say E minor. Um, changes radically our perception of the melody. And then we can go back to A minor. And instead of going to A here, maybe we go to F here. And instead of ending on G, we could, well, we probably actually want to do G there for the, for the, for the uh, pre-tonic chord. Uh, but starting on an A minor and having the melody in C major can change radically our perception of how that song sounds. Um, rather than, because most of the time we tend to put whatever the melody is, we tend to make that the root of the chord because it's really strong sounding. Uh, but you want to get away from things that are really strong sounding if you want to be dramatic or you want things to flow over the long term. If it sounds really strong the entire time, it's going to end up sounding flat overall. Um, you want to end with strength, you want to build up to tension, and you want to release it. Um, what you don't want to do as a composer is usually have a really, really strong 5-1 major chord sound right at the beginning, all the way through the piece. You could start with it, then go off and trip through the daisies for a while with something else, and then come back and end in that major key and make it sound really, really strong. So there's two ways that you can do that. Now, if you listen to a lot of jazz, jazz tends to put all the melody notes on those extensions. Um, so the chords and the melody are often kind of far apart from each other, and that lives it um, a little more subtle, a uh, little more subtlety to the harmony, and also gives the melody um, a little more drama, and sometimes can disconnect it from the chords a little bit, make it feel like it's floating. Um, so those are a couple of techniques, three different techniques. Um, extensions, which you can build up, um, changing the chords, quality of the chords from major to minor, or vice versa. Maybe from instead of using B diminished, you could use like a B major. Um, B minor, sorry, or even B major, why not? And then, so you change the quality of the chord and see how that affects uh, the feeling of the harmony. And then the last one is uh, choose, choose the accent different uh, harmony notes through your use of melody, rather than just the root accent the third, accent the seventh. Uh, whatever you happen to be doing. So hopefully that has been a little bit um, useful and interesting to you. These are just some things to experiment with. There are no shortcuts, but maybe that'll make you think in a couple new directions with whatever you happen to be working on. And um, hopefully it will work out for you. I really, really appreciate you listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I will continue this series as long as I'm able to continue it. My goal, um, which I don't know if I've made explicit in any of the videos, is to provide a really, really complete and deep music theory experience so that um, essentially you wouldn't have to go to a university and study, study music theory for three years um, at a huge expense in order to understand um, the depth of complexity of music. You'll be able to have a lot of access to that information here on YouTube. That's really what I want to deliver. Um, kind of the mission of the music part of this uh, this channel. I appreciate it. You guys have a great day. Um, it's not related to music, but you can, you know, you can buy it, Ramasa Blood Drinker, um, my book. Um, I have more books coming out this year that I'm really excited to share with you. Um, until then, have a great, great day, and I will see you um, next time.